Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India friends uh, i think uh, we are going to take up uh, another important issue uh, which relates to the understanding of the rural society and peasants basically here we are dealing with the unit 2 uh, which is based on the village studies in india i think uh, when we try to speak about the village studies uh, it is going to be an important pillar with regard to the understanding of indian society and sometimes it is been said that if we have to understand Indian society, we have to understand it through the villages. So that way, the village studies as a theme for understanding of rural society becomes very important. Uh, Bernard S. Cohan has spoken about the three major traditions of approach towards the understanding of Indian society at the end of the 18th century. And he basically says, that there are three basic possibilities through which we can study the Indian society. Uh, we can speak about the understanding in terms of Orientalist, we can have the understanding through the missionary and the third is through the administrative. So, I think uh, these are the three ways in which we can understand the Indian society when we try to approach the Indian society, we have these three mediums which will help us in understanding the Indian society. Now, when we try to speak about these issues, the important thing is that when we try to speak about how the Orientalists have viewed the Indian society and we try to say that Orientalists have basically focused upon the textual view of the society and uh, they were basically trying to speak about the village in terms of static timeless and spaceless. On the other hand, when we try to speak about the concern for the understanding of the missionaries, missionaries were basically concerned towards understanding the problems which are associated with the village communities, especially the issues related to untouchability or we try to spe speak about the issues of uh, discriminations which were prevalent in the Indian society. So, that way we try to see that there are different ways in which we can approach the Indian society. Now, let us say we try to see that the missionary and the orientalist were the polar opposite in terms of the assessment of Indian culture and society. However, both of them have agreed that there is a religious ideas and the practices that underlay all the social structures with regard to the Indian society. Uh, the third which we try to spoke about is the concern for the administrative. By administrative we mean to say that the concern which has been generated by the administrators, especially when we they try to focus upon the various aspects related to the Indian society, either it is the question of the customary laws or if it is a question of the land revenue system or if you try to see that uh, they were trying to speak about the concern for the land reforms. So, we try to see that the administrators, they were trying to understand the caste system they wanted to study the uh, land revenue system or they wanted to study the various components related to the Indian society and culture. And for that purpose, in order to document uh, those things officially, they wanted to have the study of the Indian society, especially the villages. So, we try to see that all these things, either it is the question of Orientalist, the missionary or we try to speak about the administrative, all of them were basically concerned with the understanding of the Indian society. Like when we try to speak about the concern of administrators, especially we try to speak about that there are certain important concerns related to the provincial and the imperial, imperial gazetteers of India and the census of India, which provided a systematic account of Indian society in the second half of the last century. And the reports of the revenue settlement also were very important in dealing with the relations of the peoples with the land, with the place or with a specific region. So, that way the British administrators who turn out to be an ethnographers, 
have an official view before collecting the relevant information about the village studies. So, Kohan basically tries to say that uh, there are the features of the study of Indian society can be seen in terms of a broader scale that is called as humanistically oriented traditions which emphasize the relationship between the textual studies and the static model of contemporary Indian society. An administrative tradition centers on the census for the study of caste which sought to see the Indian society as a collection of discrete entities uh, whose traditions and customs should be classified and studied. And then we have the traditions of economic study which sought to describe the working of village economies uh, with some attention to the social structure of the villages. And also we have the anthropological traditions which basically try to study the tribal uh, people uh, especially in the light of the so called uh, indigenous development. So, ultimately we try to see that the study of Indian villages which began in the 18th century uh, with the intensive uh, survey work uh, which has been carried out with regard to the land holding patterns and the early systematic studies particularly by the important people like uh, Munro, Metcalf or Mene or Baden Powell. I will just uh, uh, reflect it out. So, we have people like Munro, Metcalf, Baden Powell and other administrators who were basically trying to study the understanding of the Indian society in terms of the administrative viewpoint. Baden Powell uh, had tried to see the Indian villages in terms of the closed and isolated systems. Uh, this view however created a lot of resentment among the several anthropologists and sociologists. The studies of Indian villages in the 50s were therefore based on the assumptions that the Indian villages were not static, isolated and homogeneous. It was changing, it has its connection with the outside world and it was highly differentiated. So, I think uh, they were just trying to see the contrast uh, which has been documented by the so called administrators. Likewise, the official view of the caste system uh, with regard to the official view of the Indian villages, uh, one can say that uh, villages were basically been seen as the village republics in terms of self sufficient and the corporate villages. And here it is important to quote the understanding of Lewis Jimo or uh, to the three meanings of the term village community. First is that it is seen as a political society, second is as a body of co-owners of the soil and the third is the emblem of the traditional economy and polity. And ultimately it is to be seen in terms of a watchword of the Indian patriotism. Thus, uh, Liu Yumo in that sense has a specific way of looking to the Indian society in terms of political society, in terms of body of co-owners of the soil and also in terms of the emblem of the traditional economy. A village is far from a specific locale and more than just a collection of houses, lanes and the fields. Mendelbaum points out that for a village it is prime social reality and for the observer it is a principal unit for understanding of the Indian society. So, that way the notion that Indian villages is monolithic, atomistic and static is unacceptable to the students of village life in India. The Indian villages has hardly been a republic and a self sufficient unit. The village exogamy itself broke its isolation, atomism and independence. Its dependency on the wider economic and the political institutions and the instrumentality has been well brought in the recent studies. And we try to see that villages which has been seen as uh, an understanding of a specific unit is to be seen in terms of uh, the republic self sufficient units or autonomous is going to be distorted and villages even today exist as a territorial cohesive unit and the village identity, solidarity and the loyalty cut across the caste and the communities. Now, let us try to see that how the different people they try to see the village studies. Here we are basically referring to the various sociologists and the social anthropologists who tries to understand the Indian society in a specific framework. And we try to see that it was in the year 1955 that we try to see that there are watershed in the studies of village communities especially the work by S. Dubey on Indian village, M. N. Srinivas on India's villages, D. N. Majumdar on the rural profile and Mackie Marriott as the village studies. 
they were all published in 1955 and we try to see that the village studies contains to be the central theme of the sociological research in the 60s and the 70s as well. But the emphasis has shifted from the single village holistic studies to the multi village comparative studies and dichrony was emphasized with regard to the synchrony. Thus, the historical materials were used along with the intensive field data for analyzing the changing rural society. The folk urban continuum and the little community were the framework which has been used by Redfield and which has been examined by B. R. Chauhan and D. N. Majumdar and several other scholars in the field of rural studies. Especially when we try to speak about the contribution of B. R. Chauhan in the rural studies in terms of a trend reports, we try to say that he has drawn the four lines of approach in the study of the caste in relation to the village communities. They are one village and one caste, one village and many caste, one caste and many villages and many caste and many villages. The village studies are in a single village studies, studies in two villages and the villages which are done in the multi village studies. Johan thus provides an exhaustive review of the village studies but he does not raise a question about the theoretical and the methodological orientation towards the village studies. It was basically M. N. Srinivas, S. C. Dubey, Yogesh Atal and Ramakrishna Mukherjee who raises a few important questions about the village studies and their significance. Srinivas observes that the bias in favor of literary material is more clearly seen in the slabi of Indological studies of our universities. Indology has come to be regarded as a knowledge about the Indian past. But Srinivas puts his position as follows that the only cure for the literary bias lies in doing the field research. So, he technically wanted that Indology has to be replaced by the field studies. Srinivas states in the same essay that the point I am trying to make is the observation of Hindu social life has been and is still to be seen in terms of not as a book view or the upper caste view, we have to see it differently and Dumo has been criticized for making or taking the position of the book view of the caste system uh, which has been violated by M. N. Srinivas by moving from book view to the field view. Srinivas has said to have taken the upper caste view of the village communities and the criticism of his concept of Sanskritization and dominant caste has been raised by people like Edmund Leach, C. Pa Parvathama and many other with regard to the upper caste view. The method of intensive field study has been promoted by Srinivas not only through his study of Rampura, but a couple of students and the colleagues of Srinivas namely A. M. Shah, Andre Bete and Anand Chakravarti. They try to see the intensive field study and they try to come out with some new uh, understanding about uh, the villages like Andre Bete has tried to see the issue of caste class and power in terms of the Weberian model. Similarly, Anand Chakravarti has tried to see the Marxian viewpoint with regard to the understanding of uh, uh, the village structure. So, the Srinivas uh, layout has basically emphasized that there should be a strong plea for the participant observation rather than the survey method and the statistical exercises. There are a couple of points uh, which we should like to make about Srinivas view on social sciences. The object of the study and the nature of inquiry would normally determine the method of study. The actual relationships between the higher and the lower caste, the landowners, tenants and the agriculturals and the judgments and the communes can be better understood by the method of the intensive field work. If a method of intensive field study is applied to all the village studies irrespective of the specific nature of data required, it would amount to a methodological appropriism. So, Srinivas was basically concerned towards bringing about certain amount of reform with regard to the methodological issues to be involved with regard to the village studies. A number of plus points of the field work are noted by Srinivas. It refers to the different set of approach, a method and a technique compared with the macro survey. Srinivas ignores the uh, studies conducted by T. S. Epstein, F. G. Bele, uh, which also had tried to see the field work in a different framework, especially using the historical and the statistical material and have the comparative focus uh, which has not been done by M. N. Srinivas. Das Gupta has undertaken an analysis of 126 village studies with the two specific objectives. First is to develop a simplified typology of village 
socio economic system based on the small set of keys variables and second is to examine how far this typology helps to provide a dynamic theory of village social institutions under a given socio political setup so virtually we try to see that uh, the studies which has been done by das gupta they try to focus upon the multivariate approach interdisciplinary approach extensive coverage of data and also the standard method of data collection was based on the common research design so virtually we try to see that uh, these understanding has been carried forward further by another scholar that is professor s c dubey s c dubey was uh, uh, speaking about the structural functional approach uh, for studying the indian villages and he refer to the criticism of the intensive field studies because he says that they do not provide the diagnostic or the illustrative case studies for understanding the structure and processes villages are to be viewed as biotic community and not as a synthesized community and the third is these studies lack a coherent frame of references relevant to the structure and organization of the indian society so dubey has tried to focus upon the understanding of the villages uh, from the structural functional view point and dubey suggests that it has to be seen contextual classical and the local traditions are to be used it has to be seen with regard to the western and the emergent national traditions which are to be seen as a useful tools for the study of indian village community dubey has uh, focused upon the structural functional approach and his re, uh, ideas remain intact and he writes that a good study of change invariably follow through the good structural functional themal study of the society yoga shetal touches upon the viability of indian villages as a unit of study and later on ar desai rightly observes that ramkrishna mukherjee's approach to the study of rural society is qualitatively different from that of shrinivas dube and atal because ramakrishna mukherjee analyzes the colonial forces and the factors which led to the study of villages mukherjee has preferred a combined or the synthesized approach uh, where he tries to uh, study the dynamics of rural society that is his work also and he tried to see that how the class relations and the hierarchy are to be seen vis-a-vis -vis the caste system and methodologically too he tries to com combine the historical as well as the empirical data so the village studies which has been done in the 50s basically they try to focus upon various component of the methodological issues but later on we try to see that uh, these contributions has been significantly taken up by luis dimo and df pocock and who wrote a long review article in the first issue of the imp important journal that is contribution to indian sociology and they try to focus upon the methodological issues involved with regard to the understanding of the villages in india we try to see that mendelbaum who provides a comparison of eight villages in his paper in the edited volume by robert redfield and milton singer uh, with regard to the village india and we try to see that uh, the village india try to cover up many uh, important aspect which has been taken up later on by mn shrinivas in the form of india's villages and here i think uh, many scholars have uh, significantly contributed towards the understanding of the villages we try to see that the volume has theoretically as well as methodological issues on the study of indian villages which has been undertaken by mn shrinivas and uh, the two important questions which has been raised by kathleen gok were to what extent is kumbha petai an isolable social unit and to what extent it is correct changing in this respect gog analyzes the economic organization local administration ritual practices at the village level inter caste relations within the village and some general relations of the village to the wider community shriva states that he spent 12 months during the field work in rampura and these 12 months has a specific purpose in terms of the in depth field analysis the account given by shrinivas gives an impression that rampura was seen as an isolated whole he analyzes several aspect of social organization of village including the religion rituals hierarchy although he refers to the competition within the village but that was very meager and the village solidarity interdependence among the caste were basically seen as an important component with regard to the patron client relations 
the rule of dominant caste and the counterbalance of the village unity and the caste unity are some of the important aspect which has been studied by M. N. Srinivas. We try to see that Kathleen Gog has tried to focus upon uh, basically when the Tanjore village was being studied in the changing system, uh, she was trying to emphasize upon that how we try to see that the changing system are to be seen with regard to the open changing system which are relative in nature and also which are to be governed by the secular laws. And we try to see that uh, Kathleen Gog has adopted a class view of the Indian village, whereas Srinivas has used the cultural view of the village and Kathleen Gog's approach was seen as dichronic. However, the M. N. Srinivas approach was seen as synchronic with regard to the village studies. Kohan looks at the caste relations in the villages from the viewpoint of uh, the depressed caste, especially the Chamars. It is not a class view of the caste as seen in the case of Gog, but certainly Cohen's analysis is dichronic in nature. And he also analyzes the factor external to the villages which brought changes in the intercaste relation. We try to see that people like Kathleen Gog, B. S. Cohen, and the Beale, um, A. R. N. Beals, they have conducted intensive studies on the respective villages for about the period of 12 months for having a wider understanding about the villages. We try to see that Oscar Lewis has used the comparative analysis of present culture in India and Mexico. So, it was not only the comparison within India, rather it was seen as a comparison which was across the nations, across the civilizations. Uh, Oscar Lewis gives a fairly detailed account of the similarities and the contrast between the two villages. One was the village of Tepoztlan and another was the Rani Khera, uh, which was basically seen as the two entities uh, which he tried to compare. And we basically try to see that uh, what are the important questions uh, which are to be raised with regard to the village as a community uh, which has been taken up by Oscar Lewis. First is that is the village a community that is the first concern. Second is to what extent do the physical limits of the village defines the limits for these dimensions. And the third is to what extent do the these aspects of communities spill over into other villages so that the community might better be defined in terms of the units larger than the single village. And lastly, what is the quality of social relations of the mutual interdependence of persons or the social groups within each village. Oscar Lewis in fact has seen that the Indian village were to be seen from the point of view of the Mexican village. Some of the important conclusion that he tries to make out is he quotes from his study of the Mexican village and argues that it applies to the Indian village as well. So, it was basically a comparative analysis of the Mexican village and the Indian village and he fails to recognize the historicity of the Indian village and the economy, social organization and the polity while adopting the anthropology of Tepestlan to Rani Khera. So, I think that was the limitation which has been taken up and which was been ignored by uh, the understanding of Oscar Lewis uh, towards the village studies. So, virtually we try to see that uh, uh, we had uh, many different experiments which are been done at the various levels in order to understand the village in a specific framework. And especially when we try to speak about the contribution of Mackie Marriott, he discusses the small world of the villages within the universe of Indian civilization. He also asked the two important questions can such a village be satisfactorily comprehended and conceived as a whole in itself? Can Second is, can understanding of one such village contribute to the understanding of the greater culture of the society? So, I think uh, uh, these are the two very relevant questions that uh, uh, studying a single village, is it going to be a sort of generalization for uh, all the villages of India and can it be a representative villages in the real sense? But uh, somehow he tried to carry out these aspects of social structure and religious culture by his studies on the village of Kishangadi, uh, which he has undertaken with regard to uh, the understanding of the Indian culture and civilization. We try to see that uh, the structural analysis of the village community in India has been seen by various scholars like I just said that S. C. Dubey has used the structural functional approach and that work was been published in 1955 in the name of Indian village. 
and uh, later on he also tried to speak about the changes in Indian villages uh, which was uh, another important work the changing Indian villages was another work which has been done by S. U. Dubey. He recognizes the semi-autonomous character of Indian village yet he did not want them to be static, timeless or changeless. And we try to see that uh, Dubey's study of Shamirpet provides a description of the socio-economic and the ritual structures, family ties, level of livings and the living togethers. All these components are been taken up by S. C. Dubey in the study of uh, Shamirpet village. And then we have D. N. Majumdar uh, whose studies was on caste and communication in an Indian village. And also we have the work by Oscar Lewis. Uh, would study, uh, who studies the village life in the northern India. And uh, both of them have emphasized upon the notion of desensitization, horizontal mobility and the role of caste and clan in the factionalism and other changes in the rural India. However, we have the studies by F. G. Bele, T. S. Atestin, Andre Bete, Kathleen Gog, Ishwaran, uh, Mukherjee, Rao and Sharma. Uh, who had emphasized on the specific aspect of village communities such as the social change, economic development, social stratification, class relations, economy and also we try to see that how caste, class and urbanization they try to overlap with regard to the changes in with regard to the Indian society. On the line of M. N. Srinivas, Marriott and Majumdar, Mekim Marriott and uh, D. N. Majumdar also had another edited volume on uh, change and continuity in India's villages which has been brought about by K. Ishwaran uh, at the beginning of the 70s, 1970s. And the village studies in this volumes are from the various states including Himachal Pradesh, Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. We try to see that uh, Ishwaran observes that the change in the village society are national oriented and global oriented. So, he was trying to see that the villages are going to have its influence from the regional state character and the national character and also it has a change which is coming from the global level. So, virtually he was trying to speak about the changes which are to be seen with regard to the Indian society. And Ishwaran writes that these village studies have generally established the need for two approaches. First, the need for analyzing the social change in terms of multiple factors rather than in terms of a single factor. And second is the need to correlate micro anthropological studies with the macro sociological analysis. Virtually we try to see that the understanding of the micro and the macro sociological analysis is very significant when we try to see it in terms of uh, the real interpretation of uh, the village studies in India. And Ishwaran says that uh, these are the important questions which one has to really pose and which has been posed in his contribution to the volume edited by him. First is what is the nature of social change that is the first important thing. Second is what areas of villages are undergoing changes that is another important component. Third is what is the content and the goal of such changes and then fourth is what are the channels of social change and fifth is what are the intrinsic and the extrinsic sources of social change and finally, what are the prospect for the future changes. I think these are the very significant uh, questions which has been raised by Ishwaran uh, in his uh, study which is uh, an edited volume and which tries to cut across the various state as I discussed earlier and that is how we try to see that the changes are to be seen uh, across the culture, across the state and that has to be put in terms of a generalization. We have also uh, significant uh, uh, works with regard to the village studies which was basically seen as a shift. Uh, one of course is the pills against poverty by Goran Dajarsfield, G O R A N D D J U R F E L D T, Goran Dajarsfield and Stefan Lindberg. I think uh, uh, this work was uh, again a remarkably different work because it tries to speak about the problem problem specific studies of the village in Tamil Nadu. And here the author has also published another important piece that is behind poverty the social formation in the Tamil village. Now the studies reveals that it is 
wrong to treat the health situation as a natural product. It is rather a historical and the social phenomenon. So, the strategy of the field study was to be followed in terms of an extensive census covering the demographic and the economic subject, an ethnographic data collection through the unstructured interviews, specific interviews, case studies and the small sample studies and the participant observation method. A conventional sociological sample of around 200 village households was been conducted by them in order to have the picture about the villages. Then also we had another significant work by Biplab Das Gupta. Das Gupta had classified the village studies into uh, two important things. First is the fact finding empirical studies and second is the problem oriented studies. So, I think uh, these are certain important works which are been done by various scholars in with regard to the uh, studies on villages in India. The studies of the villages village community in 60s and subsequently have indicated a shift in the theoretical as well as the methodological issue. And we try to see that uh, the issue specific study has replaced the earlier holistic studies. So, we have now the small studies of single village within the single village also a specific phenomenon was to be observed. So, there was a gradual shift which has taken place with regard to the understanding of the villages. It was a cross cultural studies also, it was uh, multiple village studies. So, I think uh, different patterns have been adopted by the villages uh, in India by the scholars and the structural analysis has been found more relevant especially many scholars have done the structural functional approach for understanding the Indian uh, villages and we try to see that methodologically field studies combined with the survey research, historical data and interdisciplinary inputs have been conducted and that has been seen as an important issue with regard to the understanding of the Indian villages. So, friends I think uh, when we try to speak about these particular issues, we try to find out that various studies which have been done with regard to the Indian villages, they had been seen as uh, uh, something which is going to be methodologically correct or sometimes they try to pose upon certain issues which are going to be seriously seen because villages in India are quite uh, heterogeneous and uh, the studies which has been, been done by various scholars these studies were basically trying to uh, understand the villages in a specific framework with regard to a specific methodology or sometimes they were trying to study the specific phenomenon. So, virtually we try to see that these studies which have been done by various scholars starting from uh, M. N. Srinivas, S. C. Dubey, Makim Marriott, D. N. Majumdar or for that sake we try to speak about the transformation which took place uh, Oscar Lewis and then we try to see the new studies which has been done by uh, Lindbergh and uh, we have the studies by Biplab Das Gupta and others. So, there is a whole transition uh, which took place. We try to see that uh, there was a watershed of uh, the village studies which have been done in 1950s. Many scholars have contributed and there was a valid reason for that because the Indian government was very particular about uh, understanding the Indian villages because uh, the various rural development programs have been inaugurated during that period of time and we try to see that uh, these village studies has provided a uh, great impetus towards the various developmental issues. And I think uh, the important thing is that uh, how there was a shift which took place. We started with the Indologist basically the Orientalist who tried to have the book view of the Indian villages and then gradually we shifted towards. Uh, the so called missionaries and the uh, administrators who try to have the census data or they try to have the various provincial data with regard to the Indian villages. And then I think we had started moving towards the field view uh, which has been emphasized by M. N. Shnivas. So, virtually a great shift which took place is between the book view and to the field view that is consider, considered to be an important aspect uh, which one has to see. And uh, I think uh, Luis Dimo and uh, D. F. Pocock, they try to have the classification of various studies uh, which has been done earlier and they try to document it into a famous uh, journal that is contribution to Indian sociology. The whole volume was uh, uh, de dedicated towards the studies of villages in India. We try to see the contribution of B. R. Chauhan who try to study that how a village and a caste can be related to each other with regard to bringing about a change, single caste, single village. 
सिंगल कास्ट मैनी विलेजेस मैनी का मैनी कास्ट सिंगल विलेज एंड मैनी कास्ट मैनी विलेजेस सो आई थिंक मैनी परमिटेशंस एंड कॉम्बिनेशंस कैन बी पॉसिबल इन ऑर्डर टू एक्सप्लोर द इंडियन विलेजेस बट द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट वाट आस्पेक्ट इज गोइंग टू बी स्टडीड दैट मेक्स द थिंग्स मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड वी बेसिकली ट्राई टू सी दैट इन द लिटर फेज वी ट्राई टू सी that earlier we have the structural functional approach where caste was seen as an important uh, uh, indicator and variable for the study or analysis but gradually we try to see that this has later on shifted to some other components especially we try to see let us say in the last study uh, which we try to see uh, the work which has been highlighted by uh, people like viplab das gupta and also we have the contribution which has been made by uh dajerfield and lindberg uh, who try to study the uh, village mainly in terms of the issue of health so i think uh, uh, the the caste itself was not seen as a prime uh, variable uh, under uh, whose concern we have to see the village alone rather we try to see some other dimensions have been added added like kathling gog had tried to study the class view class dimension of the villages in that sense we try to see andre bethe's contribution which was been seen as uh, caste class and power uh, in the weberian framework in terms of the understanding of the certification and also we try to see certain other studies like uh, viplab das gupta had tried to focus upon the problem oriented uh, issues uh, with regard to the development so i think uh, these are certain things uh, which we have to keep in mind and we have to see that uh, what areas of the villages are going to be Uh, uh, uh changing in that sense what are the content and the goals of such changes what are the nature of so social changes which are been brought about in the villages and what are the channels of the social change and if we can uh, document these things if we can grasp these things are we in a position to actually pin it down or can we try to see that we can have the holistic model uh, through which we can understand the changes which can take place in the other villages or in the coming villages so i think uh, this is going to be an important issue uh, with that we have to focus upon but the important thing is that uh, the villages which we try to see uh, these villages how they have to be seen as uh, a compact entity because now when we try to speak about the uh, villages especially in terms of theoretical and the methodological issues we try to find out that now the villages are becoming the global village so now we try to see in the era of globalization we try to speak about the globalization and where we have the global villages the villages which are being connected through internet or through the ict with the wider world the small story of the village uh, which is basically seen as a local incidents becomes global we try to see the atrocities against dalits or maybe the atrocities against the women how they are going to be surfaced at the national and the international level so virtually we try to see that uh, the villages which were been seen as an isolated whole which were been considered to be having a limited uh, domain in terms of interaction or in terms of uh, their reflection to the wider society but now we try to see that uh, the small uh, uh, instances or incidents which takes place in the rural india they are becoming global and it's not only that even we try to see with that with the advent of privatization we try to see that there is a certain amount of encroachment by the private sectors into the rural india we try to see that many changes are taking place in the villages now we try to speak about the contract farming we try to speak about uh, the uh, uh, misuse of uh, the fertilizers or maybe the side effects of the fertilizers and the pesticides are been coming up and peoples are now going for organic farming so new forms of uh, changes are visible in in indian villages and the villages are basically seen as the site of contestation because now the villages are not simply uh, the uh, innocent or the ignorant units rather they are to be seen as an important guiding pillar for establishing the new india uh, which has to be seen more in terms of how the indian uh the future india has to be seen like when we try to speak about the issue of privatization the corporate farming uh we have to see that whether the villages are seen as the silent players or simply they are going to accept the force the external forces which are coming through the private sectors or sometimes they are going to resist it 
basically we try to see that in many parts of India we have many instances where there are the severe uh, present protest and the present movements which took place especially when the development or the uh, forceful eviction of the land takes place in the rural society. Then I think uh, many instances of the revolts have started by the peasantry, by the farmers and they try to come forward in terms of uh, the specific movements. I think these things uh, which we will we'll discuss uh, in the later phases especially in terms of the farmers movement or we try to see various other movements which are taking place maybe because of the ecology or maybe because of the, the use of uh, excessive chemical fertilizers or sometimes we try to see that uh, the new initiatives which are coming up in the form of uh, the uh, so called uh, uh, shortage of food or sometimes we have the issue of food sovereignty. So, I think many issues are going to come up which will try to focus upon how the village has to be seen uh, very differently. So, now the villages which are simply be to be seen as uh, the, the, the players uh, which are to be seen in terms of caste and class only, but now we try to see the new dynamics which are coming up because now the power is from within as well as from the outside and we have to see that how uh, the villages are to be seen in terms of uh, these uh, changes and we basically try to see that uh, these changes are to be seen more in terms of how it is going to be acceptable at the wider uh, society. Like when we try to speak about a change in terms of a model village, now this model village can it be replica in other parts of the Indian society? I think um, it is a serious question because uh, experiment at one village may not be having the same bearing in the other villages or in the other regions of the country. So, we have to see that uh, how the, the, the villages are to be seen because uh, we try to see that village are not seen simply as the assemblage of uh, the households and multiple lanes or the, <coughs> the rural countryside. Rather we try to see that it has the agency, it has the players, it has the villagers which are seen as the active participant not as a passive listeners or as a passive observers. They are also trying to dictate, they are also trying to hegemonize, they also try to come out, uh, come forward for their own cause. So, I think uh, we have to see that to what extent the villages are to be seen as uh, the entity which are uh, one can say uh, not the silent entities, rather they are having certain amount of revolutionary character, they are sometimes having certain amount of uh, uh, <coughs> new transformations uh, which can take place. Because many times we try to see that uh, villages in India which are simply seen as uh, the silent entities, but now uh, if you try to visit some of the villages we try to see that they are as modern as the urban, like uh, they have the satellite televisions, they have well connected roads, they have the modern transport communication. The only thing which they miss of course is the proper infrastructure or the urban based infrastructure in the real sense and also the population. But apart from that there are many villages uh, which are uh, seen as at par with uh, the urban uh, cities and that way we try to see that uh, the contrast which has been there between the village and the urban, uh, between the rural and the urban that is also going to bridge up and we try to see that uh, gradually we are seeing that urban is reaching to the rural uh, in many uh, in many forms either it is in terms of the health practices or it is to be seen in terms of uh, the use of uh, the land especially for cultivation or sometimes we try to see it is used as a site for investment or sometimes we try to see that uh, it is used as a site for health practices or sometimes we try to see that uh, it is seen as uh, the voluntary initiatives by various NGOs or the civil societies to bring about the transformation in the uh, rural society. So, I think uh, multiple forces are there, multiple players are there who are working for the understanding of the villages in India. So, virtually uh, friends we try to see that uh, the villages which we try to speak about, uh, I think uh, the various uh, village studies which we try to quote, uh, the various scholars which we have mentioned. Uh, these scholars and these villages uh, sometimes uh, they are the documented and uh, sociologically relevant studies uh, which are quite fruitful for understanding or diagnosis of the villages in India. But uh, uh, beyond that what is more important is 
that villages are to be seen more in terms of uh, uh, not only as a vibrant unit, but also we try to see the villages can which can act as the site for the new revolutions. Especially I think uh, uh, we had many instances uh, uh, which has uh, taken place especially uh, the areas which are near to the urban centers and they are basically near to the metropolis. They have shown, uh, shown the uh, drastic transformation with regard to the challenges which they have thrown upon to the state or uh, to the government in that sense like uh, the farmers protest which is going on uh, in general. I think with regard to the market price, with regard to the fluctuations in the uh, subsidies or with regard to the electricity bills and the other things. Uh, these things are going to be very significant and relevant uh, which one has to see. But what is more important is that we have also to see that to what extent we are in a position to see these villages in terms of the true entity. And I think uh, the important thing that comes out is that villages which are undergoing the changes by themselves basically which we try to see in terms of uh, the changes which are coming up because of the intrinsic forces. But also we try to see that the changes are also coming from uh, the external agencies from the uh, exogenous factors and village has to succumb to these challenges and the pressure in the com coming era. And uh, I think uh, we try to see that uh, now uh, the villages which are basically seen as uh, uh, the sites for uh, new sort of uh, engagement especially we try to see the technology which is uh, reaching to the villages in a very different way. We have the smartphones, we have the ICT enabled learning, we have the uh, uh, what you can say the new forms of interaction which are taking place. Uh, many initiatives have been done by MS Swaminathan Foundation. MS Swaminathan Foundation is basically working for bridging the gap between the rural and the urban especially with the ICT initiatives. And we try to see that these ICT, ICT initiatives are basically seen as the real transformations because they are trying to link up uh, through the uh, digital uh, uh, wires in that sense as such. And these digital wires are trying to bridge the gap between the rural and the urban. But I think uh, friends the important uh, concern that we have to keep in mind of course is that to what extent these changes are going to be uh, drastically different. Like when we try to speak about the changes which are been brought about by ICT enabled uh, uh, what you can say intrusions, we also try to see that uh, the new forms of unequals are created. Now we try to see that there is a digital divide which is coming up uh, between the rural and the urban. Even within the rural also we try to see that uh, one rural uh, uh, in a specific region is very different from the rural in another region. So I think uh, sometimes uh, uh, the uh, these sort of uh, adverse uh, inclusions or adverse developments are basically leading to uh, new forms of adversary in terms of the new forms of inequalities uh, and that is how we have to see that the new villages are to be seen in terms of uh, not as the homogeneous entities rather they are to be seen in terms of uh, the uh, entities which are heterogeneous which have the different implications and I think uh, many scholars uh, and many contributions uh, which we try to see are quite important especially when we try to speak about the various uh, village studies which has been done. We try to see significant works have been done with regard to the village studies in India of recent basically we try to speak about uh, Dipanka Gupta's important work that is uh, uh, <coughs> withering away of the villages that uh, whether the villages are going to disappear that is the new form of changes uh, which we sometimes try to see that the villages are going to uh, uh, wither off or sometimes we try to see the contribution which has been made by Surinder Jyotka uh, who is trying to study the villages in terms of uh, the new framework, the new caste equations and also we try to see that uh, how uh, the village sites are basically seen as uh, 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 change, change, changing in terms of the agrarian economy or sometimes it is seen as being a uh, bit modernized in terms of a green economy and how the villages are changing its character. And apart from that we also try to see uh, many village studies which has been uh, seen in terms of having its linkage with the diaspora. Uh, especially we try to see that the rural India which is having its connect uh, with the uh, not only the Indian nation but also with the uh, world across 
and especially we try to see the new form of diaspora uh, which are coming up many studies which has been done by uh, Vivek Kumar and we also t see by Ron Kiram they have trying to see and even by Paramjit Singh Judge who try to see that how the Indian diaspora especially of the rural units are been seen abroad and there are the linkage which are been there between the various Dalits groups. We also try to see that uh, new practices which are being initiated in the rural India through the self-help group uh, that also is coming up in a very drastic way. So, we have to see that uh, uh, these sort of changes are the new uh, phenomenon which are happening in the rural India and the villages which we try to see uh, in terms of uh, the homogeneity, self-sufficiency and then we try to see the distinctiveness and also uh, in terms of uh, the smallness. I think these characters uh, which has been marked by Robert Redfield has to be seen very differently because uh, villages are not seen as the, the has to be seen in terms of smallness now, in terms of distinctiveness or in terms of homogeneity or rather in terms of uh, uh, self-sufficiency. So, we have to see that what may be the new character, what, what may be the new possible characteristics uh, uh, which are to be seen with regard to the villages. Uh, so, that is how we have to see and more important is that whether a specific understanding about the character of a village is going to be the representative character of the village uh, across the nation is going to be an important question and we have to address this particular issue because ultimately we have to speak about that these sort of changes which we try to speak about. I think uh, uh, these changes are basically making the village to be more uh, different and uh, what and what uh, to what extent uh, the changes are been put differently in terms of the degree uh, that is going to be an important issue because now we try to see that untouchability uh, has not been ended uh, but it has declined i think there is a famous work uh, on uh, the understanding of uh, the changes with regard to the untouchability uh, which has been uh, an edited volume uh, untouchability in india by b s babiskar uh, Satish Deshpande and Nanni Sundar and other scholars and they try to see uh, that in even in the 1990s we try to see that untouchability has not completely ended, but I think uh, its form has changed, its character has changed and sometimes the degree has changed. So, ultimately we have to see that uh, we have to map the changes uh, which the villages has to show especially in terms of uh, the degree like the Jajmani system still we try to see the remnants of Jajmani system is found in many villages, but the important thing is that how uh, we try to see that what are the new character or what is the new shape in which the Jajmani is been carried forward. So, ultimately we have to speak about these particular issues that will make our studies uh, on villages uh, more uh, effective and like friends uh, we try to see that uh, different works which have been posed either uh, the Dumu's understanding. Uh, about what the village is or maybe B S Kohan's understanding about the village or David Mendelbaum's understanding about the village or for that sake scholars like M S Nivas and S C Dubey. So, we have to see that uh, through time what are the new uh, uh, new typologies of villages or the new characters of the villages which are coming. Sometimes uh, many uh, attempt has been made for the revisits to the villages uh, which are been done by many various scholars. Amin Shnivas himself has spoken about the remembered village uh, and how the villages have been transformed through time. So, we have to see that uh, uh, the consistency with regard to the village studies has to be continued because uh, the focus here of course, is that if we have to understand the rural society uh, in a real sense, I think uh, village is the starting point and village as we know is not uh, something which is a physical entity it is uh, very much social in nature in terms of its character, in terms of the prominence of caste, in terms of the diversity of population and that way we have to see that villages are not to be seen as the constant entities, rather they are to be seen in terms of drastically uh, uh, vibrant and also uh, uh, trying to put, uh, come out with the new forms of protest, new forms of contestation and that is what is the new character of the village. So, friends uh, uh, village studies if you try to see uh, from the very starting that what are the various theoretical and the methodological issues which are involved with regard to the village studies in India. I think uh, uh, many issues have been taken up uh, from synchrony to the dichrony and also we try to see that multidimensional studies are to be taken 
we have to have the various parameters new variables have to be introduced with regard to the village studies and that is the way in which we can study the villages in totality. So, I think uh, this is what uh, we have to take uh, from uh, this discussion and we have to understand the Indian villages in a new form in a new uh, framework and I would suggest that uh, uh, it is not only the question of uh, reading uh, the material or trying to uh, have <coughs> the enrollment in the uh, this particular course rather what is more important of course is that uh, you should apply these things uh, these theoretical framework and apply it to your own setting so that you can have a better understanding about uh, whether the things which have been discussed are going at par with uh, what you see or sometimes if you have the new observations I think uh, the time has come where we have to actually document it and we have to present the new uh, rural we have to present the new village uh, which has to emerge in the real sense. So, I think uh, this is uh, what I had to discuss on uh, the various component with regard to the village studies in India. So, that way I think uh, uh, the understanding of uh, uh, the uh, uh, rural society and the present uh, within that framework the village studies that is unit 2 I think uh, incorporates these important aspects uh, which I try to cover up in this particular uh, discussion. So, I think uh, with these uh, things uh, I should uh, thank and uh, I should be happy to have uh, uh, some of your uh, sharp observations and also maybe during the interaction uh, during the setting I will try to see that uh, what are the other ways in which we can make the things more clear. So, with that uh, I will end it up here thank you once again to all of you.